Hi, my name is Mel Sims and I am an ADHD coach. I am sat here in my lounge, um, unlike a lot of you, on the videos set in your office environments. But I was a big corporate girl for very many years, having run very large ad agencies in London. If you had asked me many years ago in my 20s and in my 30s what the most an obvious thing was that I struggled with as commercial director of a £110 million ad agency. It was something that I didn't know how to explain. It didn't have any sort of definition in my eyes. But what it was, was undiagnosed ADHD. It came out in all areas of my work, particularly when I was on the sales floor and I would find myself regularly throwing myself into work, searching for dopamine, the happy drug, by taking on more and more and more and doing extremely well. But what happened was it led to burnout. There are lots of different ways that your ADHD could be masked. Maybe you don't even realise that you have it. But looking back, looking over the different destructive emotional traits that ADHD can lead to, I realise now that I should have looked after myself a lot earlier. The assessment of adults with ADHD didn't start till 2008, by which time I was 36 years old. I thought it was quite normal to feel a racing heart, uh, feelings in my tummy when things weren't going particularly well, but I thought everybody felt exactly the same as me. And now as an ADHD coach, having had over 25 years, successful years in advertising, and since going on to be an entrepreneur and set up an under fives play barn, I'd like to talk to you about those symptoms which can hold you back. If you are in sales, or you are in creative industries, or you are in new business, or managing people as I did with teams of over 200 people, knowing about these different traits and working on them through ADHD coaching will really help you. The first one I'd like to talk to you about is how we mask our ADHD, whether we know that we have it or not. Either perfectionism will become your way of coping to make sure that you leave absolutely no chinks for people to be able to criticise you or work out that perhaps you're not as good as you thought you were or they thought you were, um, will very often be termed as imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome can fuel perfectionism. Perfectionism will eventually lead to burnout because you going that extra mile all the time masking will cause you an awful lot of problems with your health. What happened to me was my ears started popping, I would start losing weight, I would start sleeping less, and more than anything, I would mask through having two or three glasses of wine at the end of every evening. The alternative to perfectionism for when you're trying to mask what's going on and to keep everyone else from knowing is oversharing and doing more and offering your help and being extra friendly to everybody, people pleasing. People pleasing is saying yes to other people before you actually say yes to yourself. And what happens is finally the overwhelm of stretching yourself and looking after everyone else apart from yourself will cause to burn out yet again. Burnout is really dangerous. It takes a long time to get over it. And perhaps when you go back to work again, your position will not be the same one as the one that you left. So let's talk about other ways in which we try and hide our ADHD. Imposter syndrome is forever thinking that actually it's only luck that got you in the position you're in. Not your skills, not your experience, not your compassion for people, not the way that you can easily close deals by reading the room, etc. It's not luck. It's because you're brilliant. You're just different to other people. And imposter syndrome will keep making you run faster to try and hide it from everyone else. 
Unfortunately, another thing that's fueling us is protecting us, protecting ourselves from ever having any feelings of being rejected. Hence, we keep people at bay through being perfectionists, through people pleasing, through setting no boundaries whatsoever. Very often you'll be the person in the office right till the end of the day, taking on more and more work. So what is rejection sensitivity dysphoria? This is a physical pain from a perceived or a real threat of some sort of rejection. And if you're in sales or in new business and you don't get that deal that you've really worked hard to get, you probably are going to go through real self-loathing and real procrastination before you pick up the phone to make another new business call. So what you need to do, and ADHD coaching can help you do this, is to look at these different traits which come about from ADHD. ADHD is defined as attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, whereas what I would like to call it is a problem with emotional regulation. The front part of our brain, the prefrontal cortex, is what deals with executive functioning. This is the part of your brain which helps you prioritise time management, put yourself first, organisation, etc. And we're not very good at it. So the ADHD tax is another phrase which comes to mind, whereby you don't fill your forms in quick enough, you don't dare speak to the accounts department quick enough, out of shame because of the hiding, and therefore end up having to pay for things more than you actually have to. So talk to me. I'm an ADHD coach. I do it through Zoom and I can help you with these traits that you're probably keeping at bay, soothing through drinking or overworking or shopping, etc. Because you have a right to have a fantastic job and the Employment Act will make sure that you can receive access to work, funding, your company and yourself to enable you to have coaching or for different accommodations to be made at work. I, for example, couldn't work in an open plan office. I didn't like the bright lights. I didn't like the sounds. I didn't like people coming and interrupting me. And so by talking about it, you can make sure that you feel more comfortable to come to work and your creative juices can keep flowing. So think about it. What is the most unobvious thing that you struggle with? And start to talk to people. People now are far more receptive about neurodiversity. You can find me on at the ADHD Hummingbird and my website is squarerootcoaching.co.uk. My name is Mel Sims and I'm on LinkedIn. Look after yourselves. Don't burn out.